Edward Chan from HTX Ventures is preparing for the next speech. Uh, he's managing partner of the company, and Mr. Chan's topic is SEO insights and potential. Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for your coming. And also thanks to the organizer for, for the invitation. I think it's, it's been the first time for us to, to join a conference like, um, you know, highlight relevant with STO because uh, maybe a lot of people know us since um, 2013. Uh, I just ha had an interview with uh, 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 with with the with the TV channel. They may say, "Oh, who who is HTX?" Right? I have to explain the HTX first. Actually, HTX is Huobi. Uh, Huobi, I think it, I think almost everyone knows us. We used to be the uh, the biggest crypto exchange in China, uh, and we used to have the subsidiary in Korea as well called Huobi Korea. Uh, but due to the you know regulation in different jurisdictions, we do some business restructure. Uh, we still keep uh, the Mandarin name Huobi for all the Chinese or Mandarin speaker users. But uh, for the global market, we use the HTX. It's more easy to ma uh, to rem remember and easy to pronounce for all the global users. So that's for HTX. Um, and my role currently within the group, I, I manage uh, different business lines. But uh, uh, today, I just use the ventures position to to join the conference and uh, do a little bit sharing with uh, with uh, you guys about what our understanding about STO. So actually, our research team did, did quite a, uh, a, a quite a lot of you know studies. Yeah. Um, yeah, so today we want to just share some insight and uh, the trend which we observed. Um, number one is about the STO market. Um, I think everybody knows STO is not a, a it's not a very new concept. Actually, it start from very early stage. Um, probably go back to 2017 or maybe even 2016. But based on our study, <coughs> the STO market has grown tremendously uh, from. 374 million to uh, estimate about 1 billion. And uh, the growth rate is, is uh, very high. And uh, in the 2022, the trading momentum is very high as well. The trading volume increased around 386%. And um, um, yeah, if, if you look at the, the, the graph over there, uh, it's continuous growing. And you can also check all the trading volume from you know, uh, this is a STO market cap website. To be funny, in the very beginning, I don't even know there's a website like that. But uh, it's, it looks like um, you know the industry elements become more more and more established. Uh, and uh, based on the based on the the research, we can also see that for STO market in Korea, um, it's also growing. Um, in the 2013, 2030, we expect the Korea will have around. Uh, 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 367 trillion won market size for Korea market only. So there's uh, a lot of huge opportunity here. That's that's what we see. And for STO, I think uh, uh, I think we assume a majority of the people here are expertise in this area. Uh, we just uh, have a very uh, very short highlight about uh, our understanding about the, the technology. For STO, there's a few uh, strengths. Number one is definitely the flexibility, right? If you compare with the traditional uh, tech, STO, they fully leverage the blockchain and the tokenomics and other you know, Web3 technology so that make every single asset, the issuer issued, can have a more flexible way to do the refinancing. Any any size of the investor usually they will have a chance to join the join the assets refunding re, re, fi, financing and the trading stuff. For example, um, you know usually if you go to uh, you can buy a bigger uh, maybe a bungalow or villa in Singapore. It's quite expensive, right? For example, maybe it will cost uh, maybe ten million Singapore dollar, dollars. It's quite expensive, right? So for 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 normal investor, maybe a bit hard for you to invest into one bungalow. Because you have to pay ten million Singapore dollar in one time, or maybe in total by yourself. But we can try to, to STO the asset, which you can 
divide the STOS uh, the the bungalow into different pieces, and uh, no matter what size of the investor you are, you can have a chance to join that asset, no matter for trading or fundraising. Second one, uh, 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 obviously, it also take advantage of the technology, right? So we can use the blockchain to achieve a more higher liquidity because we know in the Web3 space, the exchange is the dominant player within the industry and providing a stronger global liquidity. Um, uh, and for STO, it will, it, will, uh, it will enjoy a similar strength as well. And moreover, by using the smart contract, you can conduct a lot of transactions automatically. For traditional finance, everyone, they need a lot of you know, manual job, right? You have to go to the bank, you sign a lot of documents, you're waiting for the process, will cost you maybe a few weeks or maybe even a few months. But by using the blockchain and the smart contract, everything will be very automatically, efficiency will be enhanced. And third one is it's a positive token economy. Uh, because uh, one of the good innovation for token is by using the, the token economy, we restructure the whole production relationship. So which means you can uh, collect the right value at the right people, and you can distrib distribute the right value to the right people. So which means we'll have a more positive circle for the whole you know, um, you know, uh, activity for the STO. And some other advantage as well, like you know, more complete regulation. STO, we treat it as a security. So every single security, you should have a fully obligation under the management by the regulators. And also some you know, high potential with other innovation concept and technology merge. So that's all the process and the strengths we have, um, we have seen. And also there are some limitations. Number one, to be friendly, STO is a more restrict um, asset type, which uh, no matter from the regulation side or from the issuer side or from the investor side. I mean, for, inv for investor side, it may be a bit easier, but for regulation side and for issuer side, we have more strict restrict uh, requirement, which set a, a, a bit higher threshold for this part. Second one is, um, to be friendly, uh, the govern the each government, their attitude towards STO is changing all the day. It's not like um, uh, it's not like uh, how do you say that? The pure token market. Pure token market is two direction. One direction is purely freedom market. I mean, majority of the jurisdiction government they don't even have the regulation for that. For the other side, it's more and more restricted and uh, close to the traditional regulation. But for STO, because it starts from the security, so all the governments and the regulator, they pay a lot of attention into the STO asset type in the very beginning. So that's why they be very cautious. And this cautious will, how do you say that, um, cost more time, uh, time to set up the right regulation and it's continuously changing. So that will be a second challenge. Um, Third so one is also, you know, the, the participants and the target audience for the STO. Uh, for the current our, um, geographic wise, we see, especially in Asia, uh, we still see a quite positive uh, trend, uh, especially from Japan. So I think Japan is one of the most uh, positive market for STO especially from 2019. And uh, uh, if uh, everyone, if you are familiar with the, uh, the latest uh, Japan government situation, the latest, gen uh, the latest uh, generation of uh, uh, Japan, Japan government, they are quite uh, bullish on the Web3 and STO. So they announced a lot of positive policy to support all the local Japan uh, enterprise and corporates to initiate their own projects. And all the main financial group is doing something like that. No matter for investment or do the you know um, uh, entrepreneurial projects or others solution. So you can see on this graph, you can see a lot of different players. And for Korea, we also see a, a, a growing trend. Uh, but f so far, majority of the, the asset which uh, Korea market happens more real estate, as we just mentioned. But it's it start to extend expanding. 
maybe for example in 2022 expanded to maybe artwork or maybe RITs. In 2023, it started to expand to the entertainment and culture. Um, and the entertainment industry and energy and uh, some other natural resource industry as well. Um, and for the regulation, to be frankly, different, um, different jurisdiction has different stage, but the majority of them are in a very early stage. Uh, for Singapore, uh, for Singapore, we already have the Security and the Future Act and already covered it into that. But so far, I mean, I just had an interview, so. The host also asked me, so is Singapore STO open for retail clients? So far, no. STO is only focused on the institution clients and the high net, high net wealth clients so far. But for Philippines and similar, but you need a VASP license so that you can, uh, you can have the authority to run the business. And for Hong Kong, Hong Kong right now it become more and more aggressive. I think uh, you guys definitely see a lot of news about Hong Kong. Start from quarter one in this year, Hong Kong government say they are all in Web3, right? They're all in Web3. They'd be very aggressive. They say we'll have the number seven license for crypto exchanges. And uh, in the very beginning, it only covered the institution and the PI, which is the uh, pro uh, professional investor. But right now, they open for the investor, uh, the retail clients as well. So for STO, that's part of the concept which we discuss very frequently during the quarter one and quarter two. A lot of Hong Kong media also come to me to talk about, you know, how's your view about it? Is there any chance? And I also know a lot of, uh, you know, owner of some listed company in Hong Kong. They're also quite interested in this area as well. So they start to initial some ideas or they say, oh, we have a lot of good asset package, but we don't know how to do the refining or how to do the tradings, right? And STO become one of the good choice for them. For Taiwan, I think they just started, I think, but but maybe you know, you know, right? Taiwan usually be more flexible in this area. They Their regulation will upcoming later. And for Thailand, Thailand is more restrict uh, because we also co-work with, I think the top three biggest financial group in Thailand. So for Thailand, it's controlled by the, you know, royal system. Uh, they already have three licenses which cover all the STO and STO relevant business. So if you want to run that, you have to get a license first. It's similar as Philippine. Okay. Yeah, and uh, regarding the future trend, right? So based on our observation uh, and we do some study, uh, what we can see is the, the trend is uh, it's more bright. It's more bright. Um, uh, the volume increase, as I just mentioned, uh, the market cap grow as well. You can go to the STO market cap. Uh, usually people go to coin market cap, right, for tokens, but uh, you can go to STO market cap for STO business. Um, and also, um, you, can, you can see the group here. Uh, globally, more and more, more and more traditional institutions or investors, they are trying to look at into it, including the ETF topic, which we discussed quite frequently in the past quarter. A lot of people say, oh, why the Bitcoin price going up? Because uh, they have a very high possibility that the government, uh, the US government will approve the ETF for Bitcoin. And uh, the, the bailout asset management uh, firm, they are also trying to uh, launch the ETF for Ethereum as well. So there's a lot of positive signal happening right now. So it also will provide a, a positive influence to the STO market as well. Um, yeah, so regarding STO, right? So we have to talk about, you know, which type of the asset you can go with STO. That's a lot of... Uh, issuers or maybe you know entrepreneurs or investors they would like to ask. Then, then based on our study, number one, the, the most uh, mature practice is definitely the real estate. I, I don't I don't uh, waste a lot of time about the uh, real estate, but we already see a lot of cases happen in the past few years, including uh, St. Regis, right, executing the extreme security token offering uh, and. Uh, some other place. They already have a lot of uh, practice for the real estate. We, we don't, we don't uh, go deeper into this place. 
And besides that, it's definitely private equity, right? Actually, I just had a, a meeting with uh, one of my uh, uh, investment club. We have a small investment club uh, last night. So they also asked my, me a question because all these uh, members, they came from traditional investment uh, industry. They say, oh, hey, Edward, what's the differentiation between the private equity investment and a token investment? What's the differentiation, right? So private equity, um, majority of the stuff I think everybody knows, but there's one thing which they cannot replace token is private equity usually they have a lower liquidity. Lower liquidity means if, for example, if I open a coffee shop here, right, if I ask someone to invest, for example, I'm an investor, I invest maybe 10% of the share, but if I want to, how do you say that, cash out, I, I want to quit, it will be very difficult because I need to find someone to buy it 10%. Otherwise, I won't have a chance to, to, to cash out or to, to quit. But for STO, it's a possibility that we can you know, divide your 10% share into unlimited pieces of share. And you can ask a lot of different level of the investor to join. So that's a possibility. Um, and this private equity, you can uh, extend into a lot of different companies, and already we already see a lot of uh, you know practice as well, including in Singapore DBS, which you know is the the government backed the biggest bank system. They also doing the STO and helping the uh, local SME and the big firms to uh, initial their equity STOs. And we see some other uh, potentials like you know resource stones, materials, or communities. You can definitely by leverage STO. That's possible. Um, other natural resource, it's possible. And also the the, the bigger uh, I mean yeah, and other maybe you know entertainment product content, all these things you can try to go with STO. <coughs> okay. Another interesting topic we want to share today is a lot of people also ask me, right? So what's the differentiation between STO and RWA? Because RWA is a quite a, uh, a popular concept. Uh, go back to quarter two this year. I think, I, think, I don't know if uh, everyone know about RWA, but RWA is a real world asset. The differentiation between STO and RWA is, from our understanding, RWA is more wider concept, which means RWA, they cover all the real estate, uh, real world asset, no matter you are real estate or you know you are private equity or you are all the financing, uh, you know, uh, stuff, you, including all these assets, and, um, no matter you have the monetary, uh, monetary value or non-monetary value, you, you cover it. But for the STO, it more focus on the security sector only. So that's the differentiation. Um, number two, for STO, it highlight the security and also the investor protection. So as I just mentioned, uh, so that's why the regulator is more cautious about STO. So that's why they continuously improving the regulation for that. And they have a higher threshold and standard for the issuer, which means it's not easy for you to initial STO you know, anytime, but for token, you can initiate it at any time, right? And for RWA, it's more like an opposite version. So they pick up the existing asset, which, you know, very much true established asset, no matter, for example, uh, US bond right now, or any, you know, equity uh, diet, right? Or any other packaging or structured product, which already established. And they move, they bring these product into the crypto space and uh, ask the users or investors to use the crypto way to invest. So that's the opposite way. And uh, uh, it pick up the more established assets. So that's why it's much easier. Uh, besides, you set up a, a fully regulated ex, uh, platform for others, it's, it's quite flexible. Um, yeah, so that's the differentiation. And uh, uh, so in summary, we think STO can be seen as a limited implement, implementation of RWA. And we, we are also quite bullish uh, about the RWA market. As I just mentioned to the, uh, during the interview, if you know about the DeFi pillars data, RWA is becoming already number six for the TVL, which is very high growing in the past two quarters. And uh, 
I will just share a little bit about RWA. Um, this is the the main uh, milestone for RWA growing in this year, start from January, because you know uh, myself and my team, uh, we 100% focus on asset side, no matter for investment or listing or partnerships. So we monitor all the uh, you know asset actions on the market. So you can see, no matter from top Wall Street institutions, or to Asia top financial groups, or to Web Street top DeFi of uh, or financial group, they are targeting our WA. For example, MakerDAO, <coughs> their revenue grows three times just in this quarter to due to the RWA strategy adapt adaptations. And uh, Maple, they also had a very good uh, price growing in the quarter two due to the RWA. And for the Tron, uh, which part of our group's uh, Prada, uh, we, we, uh, we launched STUSDT. Currently, they already have $1.5 billion TVL for the RWA as well. So we see a lot of uh, stuff and uh, you know big guys enter the RWA space. So it's also the, the fact uh, uh, which can show us a, a very positive trend for RWA. And ETF, we just mentioned, we don't repeat. We already see a lot of big guys, uh, no matter ARK or iShare or BRICE or you know, uh, um, all these uh, big uh, Wall Street firms or financial groups, they are applying for ETF. So by the approval of ETF, if it happens, we'll, they will set up a strong bridge between the pure financial uh, market with the Web3 market, and the more money flow will enter the new Web3 market, which will uh, uh, grow the whole Web3 uh, market from maybe currently is around, I think, 1.2 or 1.3 trillion to around maybe 5 trillion. That will be a tremendous growth in the, in the upcoming years. Yep. Uh, so at the, at the conclusion, we think, um, yeah, this is what I just mentioned, uh, the RWA growing quite a lot. Besides the liquidity staking, RWA already become the number six, number six, it's around a six billion TVL already. Yeah, there's a lot of good uh, uh, practice, no matter for US, Europe, Asia, uh, we see a lot of uh, practice, uh, stable coins, synthetic assets, fixed income, trade by real estate, uh, a lot. And I think for STO, they can also l study a lot and learn a lot from it. <coughs> uh, yeah. This is for all for the uh, RWA cases. I, I don't go further with RWA. Uh, um, yeah, so, so as a conclusion, we think STO, from our understanding, number one, we see a very bright future. Uh, with uh, no matter a growing, continuous growing market for Web3 or for STO itself. Number two, uh, STO needs more uh, needs more innovation, and be and they can become a more pioneer innovation tool for all the financial markets. <coughs> and number three, uh, the regulation will become more and more mature, especially for the you know the main financial market. No matter for Singapore, Hong Kong. You know, for U.S., Europe, uh, Middle East, or maybe for Korea as well, uh, and others. Uh, the industry is still in the early stage, so we need more education, sharing, discussions, more uh, Thailand people to join to build the industry uh, industry together. Yeah, and uh, at the end, I think for us, uh, we found it uh, in 2013. Right, we are dinosaur OG player within the industry. Uh, we also run the HTX Ventures. HTX Ventures, we use our own balance sheet. So far, I think we invest uh, over, I think, uh, 200 to 300 million dollars in the past five years. And we are the investor for over 230 projects, over 20 top level, uh, um, you know, Web3 VC arms, including like Binance Lab, Multicoin, 1KX, Shima, Republic, IOSG, uh, Spartan, NGC, Hashkey, all these guys who are the IRPs. And we, we incubate over 20 projects as well. So what we can offer is, number one, definitely we can support the project, no matter for investment or incubation, accelerating or uh, listing. Second one, we can do a bunch of branding, co-marketing stuff to help the project to grow. And also, we have very complete 
comprehensive product and service. I don't I don't repeat here. I think the majority of people know us. Uh, yeah, this is our data. I don't care. And we got a license here, global. And then we have a big ecosystem. Uh, so um, all the big firms co-work with us. Uh, so yeah, so happy to happy to to meet uh, all the good projects and you know industry uh, business partners here and uh, to explore the collaboration opportunity. Thank you.